guys, we're in Norway, and you know what? It's not too shabby at all. But actually, before we get into the whole Norway thing, let's take you back a couple of days when we were boarding our ferry from the UK over to Holland. So yes, good morning. Catching you up from somewhere in Holland. Um, we left Cambridge uh, yesterday, but before that... We went to see, well, I went to see Pink in Bolton. Yeah, um, really, really good concert, fantastic. Although very confusing, I was standing around the stage, nobody was dancing. Oh, boring so-and-so's. I thought that was the point of a concert. And then we came back down in the train, which was uber delayed, and um, got into Cambridge, mad crazy pack of the van. And then yesterday morning, up early, headed to the ferry at Harwich. Where I had upgraded us to the Stena lounge on the boat, basically so I could eat everything that was yeah. free. And I know it's not free because you pay for it, but we definitely got our money's worth. Oh, don't include me in this wee thing. <laughs> I was forced into eating all of that food. I got both our money's worth. Yeah. It is It is worth it, as it long as you're willing it. to kind of... Uh, eat and drink everything. Exactly. And then even though we got off the ferry in good time, we were actually the last people to get through customs. For some reason, our lane was just ridiculous, so that was a bit frustrating. Um, slightly stressful road system, getting out of the uh, Hook of Holland. Reasonably easy journey, until we got about one mile from where we're staying here today. So, ever had the issue with Park for Night and Google Maps, where it just takes you to completely the wrong places? And both of our phones were doing exactly the same thing. First of all, it showed us up about three miles from where we needed to be. The GPS just had us all over the place. However, a silver lining for getting lost. We were driving along and saw this cyclist coming towards us and he was weaving all over the place and Lovely I was really wobbly. worried he was gonna hit us. And he was going like the clappers. And then all of a sudden he just disappeared. He, he kind of cycled off and I thought, oh, he's heading into his house. No, he's heading into a ditch. <laughs> And he literally really disappeared. So I had to kind of hazard on, jump out. I think I've got a little bit of footage which you can see here. The boy was absolutely hammered. As I pulled out, pulled away this kind of plants, just this big massive smile. Happy! Happy! <laughs> so we kind of made this other lady dragged him out and well we we cleared off. She was then able to converse with him, but I'm not quite sure how that poor chap got home. Well we are staying on a farm. I guess I'll let, I'll let them away with it. But and I have to say, if Nigel puts where we're staying, we wish we could have stayed longer. We've only yeah. been here 12 hours, but it's lovely. Beautiful. It's really, really nice. lovely. 15, 15 euro a night. Um, you need to bring cash and the right money because you have to put it in an envelope and put it in um, a letterbox. Yeah. Electric water, the whole nine yards. I'll put a little link somewhere. <laughs> here comes another tractor. <laughs> Two minutes. We're just about to hit the road. I was going to run, but just so tired after our epic long day yesterday that I just like, had a nice lie-in. Epic long day, you sat and- We got up at half four and we got here at half eight. It was a long day. No driving from this one though. Navigator. Oh look, we're arguing already. <laughs> right, so we're gonna hit the road. We've got about a three hour drive. We have to do our shopping today because of course, next couple of days we're gonna be going through Germany, but all of the shops are shut in Germany on a Sunday. And of course we've got no food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about the whole packing food thing in a, in a bit. And um, yeah, I guess we'll catch up when we get to our park up later on today, which hopefully will be just outside Bremen in Germany. So we drove through Germany and found a functional stop up for the night where Nigel watched the Champions League. Um, kind of watched the Champions League. <laughs> our TV signal, even though we got all of the channels, I had to kind of piece together the, the players to see who was actually shooting. And of course, the result, not good for a Man U fan. And then we headed on to the border with um, Denmark 
to a place called Flensburg. And when we arrived, um, the park up there can hold about 50 vans, but unfortunately it was a, I think the car boot sale, and the, it was just crazy, but we managed to get a stopover. But, as I said, a car boot sale, and you know how much I love those. What fresh hell is this? Oh, oh. Trust me to pick a park up right next to a massive car boot sale. It does have its redeeming qualities. Oh, this market has all of a sudden gone up in my estimation. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, markets aren't all that bad. And she's buying bonus. Oh, Too hungry, I need to eat first. It was actually Nicola's idea to get this here, so yeah, don't blame me. We have to share, that's the only thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't, he suggested I would have had my own. Hmm. Let's get stuck into this bad boy. And then we hopped on our bikes and actually cycled down to the old port in Flensburg. And as you can see here, really beautiful little area. Loads of families and people out enjoying drinks and ice cream. And there was another market. <laughs> a new place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. Anyone for boot life? Passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in, so where I can find myself. And then from here, we picked up our last few cheap supplies in the city market of Flensburg, and then crossed the border and spent about three and a half hours driving up through Denmark. Um, to I think it was called Brondeslev. Brondeslev, and again, just another very functional, basic parkover, parkover stopover. But it was beside a lovely uh, rhododendron uh, park and gardens, so we spent a little bit of time exploring there. And then that just left us about half an hour's drive up to the port at Herchels to grab the boat across to Norway. The boat was four hours, just under, and it was perfectly calm all the way. And Nicola had a bunch of work to do, so we just kind of sat and chilled out. And also, because we had then moved into the whole Danish-Norwegian price sector, um, we had to sit and watch on very jealousy as the couple beside us had chips and mayonnaise. They smell amazing. <gasps> but they probably would have cost about 7,000 pounds. And that brings us into Norway. Hang on a minute, you failed to mention the amusing entry into Norway where somebody got a bit overexcited. Now, Norway has got pretty tight uh, customs laws and there's an app that you can do to work out how much, obviously buying alcohol over here is very expensive. So we bought a couple of bottles over ourselves. Now that pushed us over our limit, but you can work out what you owe. So we paid the monies and we got our little receipt. Happy days, I thought. Policeman sort of pulled us over. So I immediately was like, receipt, receipt, receipt. And he's like, what's that? I was like, receipt for alcohol. I don't want to see that, I want to see your passports. Oh, so off went the receipts, passports, no problem whatsoever. He kind of pointed us, us, us onward. And instead of turning left the towards gate. some gates that are just shut, to be fair, Nigel drove straight on into the customs shed. <laughs> At which point the customs officer kind of came round to me and was going, What are you doing here? Why are you here? Have you dog? Have you cat? But I went, no, I have receipt for alcohol. <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> oh, why are you here? And the funniest thing was as well, the guy behind it just followed us. <laughs> so we all then had to spend five minutes making small talk with the customs guy while we waited for the guy in front who was being properly checked out. Yeah. And nobody checked nobody our receipt. Cared. Nobody cared that we were bringing in over our quota of alcohol. I think Nigel would never make a criminal. No. He just cannot do it. He just wants to prove his innocence to everyone. Yeah. And, finally, he speaks in a really weird accent whenever he goes somewhere foreign. Good yar, good yar. What the hell was that about? I was getting overexcited with my receipt. Anyway, we managed to escape customs, uh, drove out, and then drove on about half an hour to where we are parked right now. And this is a little town called Mandel. Pretty functional air, but a five minute walk away from, well, you can see it here.
So we're going to hang around in Mandel for the next couple of days, just kind of chill out, go for a couple of walks. We're just easing ourselves into the whole Norwegian part of our journey. We did spend a few minutes yesterday looking around a, a supermarket just to see prices. Some are more, some are less, some are about the same. So you just have to pick and choose what you buy, really. Yeah. So. And look, by the way, I have to spend for a run. I don't normally dress like this to go out for the day. <laughs> At least we're not wearing matching kind of running things now, which we both have as well. So. But lovely sort of boardwalk. You can run around just to this beach behind here. It's yeah. really beautiful. Well, Norway has already showed herself as the beautiful country that she is and looking forward to exploring her more and obviously taking you guys along as well. And hoping the weather stays like this and not the rain that everyone talks about. I know, well, I'm pretty sure it's going to rain at some point. Right, well, we're going to head back to the van. I think there's second coffee on the go. And I guess we'll catch up from Mandel at some point later today. So in Mandel, there is a really nice coastal walk that you can do. It's about 8k in total. We did a little bit of it this morning where we were given a little update from Norway from, and now we've come out to do the, the rest of it. You're lucky you're getting this because just as we left the van, I had a little milk accident and Nigel dropped his camera. Yeah, it was a bit of a disaster all around. I think we're going this way, are we? Oh, you sure that's not going to take us back, no? Still not quite sure if this is the right way, but hey, looks like we're going into someone's garden. Oh, and I get attacked by a bee again. Right, I think we'll find our way. And we have just walked through. I think it's called Riso Bank and it's now owned by the equivalent of National Trust here. But it was originally built by the guy that introduced a paraffin factory to the area. And then he sold that land to his son and turned it into a, a holiday resort. But the house was actually built by a Scottish architect who was Robert somebody. I want to say Lauren Burns. Harper. <laughs> I might have made that up. And I can't remember the guy's name, the Norwegian guy, but he also became a lord and he spent a lot of time in Scotland. To be honest, we're normally, we're normally giving you no information. We've given you half the information yeah. there. And also, the guy who owned that house, all three of his sons and two of his nephews were killed in the Second World War, yeah. which is why it was bought by the National Trust, um, because he had nobody to leave it to, which is very sad. But yeah, look him up if you want to find out his name, because I can't remember. Don't listen to us, as usual. Right, but look, you've got some facts. Some facts. They may or may not be true. Right, well, we're going to wander on, carry on now on this coastal path around Mandel. Oh, and this is lovely. Really, really beautiful. Get into nature, they said. I've done 11 and a half miles, I'm shattered. And he's denying me a biscuit until we get to a certain point. I have to, I have to save them in case we get lost out here for the day. Oh, oh and we're still going up. Oh. I'm not eating enough for this kind of rubbish. Or maybe you're not eating enough rubbish for this kind of thing. Oh, that'll be it. It is beautiful. Though. What a lovely hike. We're about halfway, I reckon. What? Didn't think I said, oh. so, said that out loud. But we'll, we'll soon be at a tea spot. And um, one biscuit oh. each because it's so expensive we can't afford them. I was just about to swear. Don't worry, we can bleep that out. It looks like onward and upwards as well. It is indeed, it is indeed. Oh, looks like Nicola has spoken. We have dedicated this, our tea spot. I think she basically spotted a seat. But having said that, it's a pretty nice seat. <laughs> That's a little bit gorgeous. Oh, that's beautiful. Good spot. Good spot, that girl. <laughs> I think I just swallowed a fly. <laughs> and I can bury you if you annoy me in that hole. <laughs> when would I ever annoy you? Mm. Oh, tea time. Well, that's a tea stop over pretty, pretty promptly. My ambiance was ruined by a really big spider crawling up my leg and I freaked out. We shall carry on this dander, but if you're ever in Mandel, I would certainly recommend... Well, firstly, Definitely recommend coming to Mandel, it's beautiful. And definitely recommend coming on this little nature hike. I'm getting slow, I know. <laughs> I keep thinking about the spider and hoping I didn't flick it onto my bag and it's right now working its way back was, up to my neck. I was about to make a joke about it being crawling on your neck, but I know you would have freaked out and probably slapped me in the face and knocked the camera over. Right, onward. How cool is this? So behind me, I'm not sure you'll be able to see that there, but they've actually attached streetlights 
all the way along here as well. So I guess if you're walking at night time, and I guess later in the winter it does get dark quite early, but you've got street lights. That's fantastic. Well, good morning again, guys. He's got me climbing up another hill. Yeah, we finished hike yesterday, <laughs> went back to the van, chilled out, I went out and did a little bit of photography last night. The light was beautiful. I couldn't walk because I'd done over 14 miles. <laughs> but we've decided that we need to, there's a, a high point in the town of Mandel. So we're going to climb up there, have a bit of a view, and then go for a bit of a swim, I think. A bit of a cool down, because it's already- Swim, as in dip beneath the water. <laughs> getting her bits and bobs wet. That's all needs to matter. Right, let's get up those steps. Go on then, go, oh. on. go on, go on. One and two and three and four. No, come on. <laughs> go, 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 almost there. That may not have been true. Uh, what are you doing sitting down? We're not at the top yet. Yeah, but there's lots of people up there, so I'm giving them time to disperse before we go on. Likely excuse. Already though, beautiful views, and we are quite near the top. So we are parked up just a little bit out of town, up, up you no, know, actually, no, up here, yep, up there. Um, there is an official area down in the town as well. And then yesterday's walk took us out around the coastal walk around this way. Right, well, I think we're gonna wander up to the high point. There are... Yep, they're dispersing. Oh, they're dispersing. And onward we go. Uppity, uppity, uppity. The views are fantastic though, as you can see. Just beautiful. And actually, if you look all the way as far as the eye can see, there's little water inlets all the way. Check this out on a map, and which is why there are so many people owning speed boats and crazy jet skis. Although I don't think we're going to get into the little pergola thing, because there's bunches of kids, obviously doing some kind of school treasure hunt or something. So we didn't finally get into the pergola, but we just got to share it with everyone else. So anyway, lovely views. Nice to run up, walk up. Now, of course, Nicola just loves scrabbling down the scrabble. So this will be fun getting down this. Well, hang on, I've seen the viewfinder's coming free, so I'm have a look. The viewfinder? Go on, girl. Go on, girl. Whoa. A little bit of a run to our swim spot. I'm testing out my calf, which is in recovery. Beautiful place, gorgeous. Well, feeling very refreshed. That was, that was very lovely. Nice. It was really nice, actually. Well, guys, given the fact that the GoPro battery is once again playing silly buggers, this will be a very quick outro. Hope you've enjoyed our little first few days here in Norway. We certainly have. And fingers crossed, more of that to come. But I guess that'll be a story for next time. Right, guys. Oh, I'm waving too soon. You're waving too soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.